Well, howdy, and welcome to Move Early, Move Often. I am Blake Martin, and my co-host, uh, as always, uh, you can't hear him in the background right now because I'm having technical difficulties, is uh, Thomas Karakolis. He's uh, keeping it real. Today, I'm bringing you the technicals. Um, but uh, what we're doing is it's Twisted Tuesday, and we're going to do a little bit of uh, stretching and exploration within stretching. Um, a lot of times uh, we spend um, in stretching, we kind of we kind of move immediately towards the extreme end range of our stretch, and we don't take time to see where the stretch begins and and kind of where it ends. And so today we're going to take a little time to do that, and we're going to explore two stretches specifically. Um, that are around our hips. Um, all day long, I've been kind of either standing or sitting at my desk, and um, I uh, I don't move my hips a, a whole lot during that time. So we're gonna get a little bit warmed up. We're gonna move around. Uh, there's some there's this glop that's kind of like egg egg whites. It's in each of your uh, uh, in your synovial joints, uh, the, the joints with a capsule. And uh, it we've got about a tablespoon, maybe a little less in your hip joints and a uh, bunch in your knees as well. But this glop is kind of like an oil that lubricates the joint and allows it to move. So importantly, because we've had so little movement during the day, uh, I'm going to get us moving a little bit, kind of get that glop moving around, and then we'll get down and we'll get into the actual stretching portion of our program. <clears throat> oh, yeah, I, I guess I should uh, I should make my, my little name thing up here, uh, you know, to make it all official. I've got my mat here. Um, you can pause and get your mat. I'm wearing socks. Um, my feet are cold. Uh, and that's just, you know, that's, there's no reflection on anything about anybody. It's, it's all about me. And so if you feel personally offended by these dark socks on my hideously white legs, then um, it's not about you. It's about me. All right, so we're gonna start, we're gonna just start with some marching. We're just trying to get the blood flowing. We're trying to get this, uh, this activity, uh, this inactivity out of our bodies. Bring your knees a little bit higher. And swing your arms a little bit, just to, we're gonna get that blood pumping through the heart. And knees a little bit higher to go a little faster for this last 30 seconds here. We're not getting very far in our marching, but uh, we're marching. We're marching. We're doing it. And, okay, now we're going to do some spider stomps. So you're going to kind of go out to the side, stomp that spider, come back in. And we're going to stay on the same side. Uh, we'll do it on alternate sides, I'm sorry. But we're going to progressively get higher. So what we're doing is we're just kind of, we're getting the um, inside of the femur head, the acetabulum, all glopped up. and. Uh, we're just moving that fluid around in lots of different directions. All right. And now we're going to do uh, swings with our legs. You can hang on to a table if you happen to be in your kitchen office. Uh, you can hang on to the side of your desk. You can if you've got a toddler, uh, their heads are often almost exactly the right height for placing your hand on top of. But don't apply too much pressure to the top of a toddler's head. A tall dog, a tall dog would also do the trick. All right, and side to side, same thing. So what we're doing here is we're, we're also, we're warming up the muscles a little bit and just kind of getting a little bit of movement into the connective tissues. Paint, other leg, from side to side. All right. 
So we're going to do two uh, main stretches and we're going to uh, take these stretches. We're going to get into position for about 30 seconds. We're going to kind of move around in the stretch for about a minute and then we're going to switch and we're going to do the other leg. These are stretches that involve 90-90 positions, all right? So a 90-90 position is simply your front leg is at 90 and your back leg is at 90, all right? We're going to do two different ones. We're going to do one that is more or less a lunge like this. Um, now, if you've got a little more flexibility, then you can creep your foot forward. I don't, I don't know if you see my foot kind of moving forward. So we're just spending time here getting into this position. And you want to be just at the beginning of a stretch in your hip. So if you have to, I don't want you to go deeply into the stretch. So just press into it. And now what I want you to do, I'm going to turn front waist so you can see, hopefully you can see, I'm going to bring my hip in real close. So what I'm doing is I'm just moving into the stretch and then I'm just kind of moving my hip from side to side and back out of the stretch and into the stretch. I'm not um, going really deeply into the stretch. I'm not going to 11. You know, I'm just kind of keeping this back around seven or eight. Um, it's not the full range of my stretch. But what I'm really trying to do is just explore. It's more about an exploration and just kind of finding out, oh, you know what? There's no stretch at all here, but if I just move my leg just a little bit, there's a huge stretch for me available. Because there's lots of different muscles that cross the hip here. You've got uh, sartorius, tensor fascia lata, pectineus, uh, rectus femoris, and uh, iliopsoas. They all cross the hip. So here we are, and we're just kind of exploring all those guys. All right, back out of that stretch. Let's switch legs. So I'm doing it. I'm just going to switch sides so you can see what I'm doing. Again, I'm setting up in the hip. I'm taking in the stretch. I'm getting taking about 30 seconds just to get there. I'm just kind of finding, I'm creeping my foot forward a little bit, just wiggling it and finding out where is that, where does that stretch begin? And I've got my hand on top of my knee for balance. And now I'm just going to kind of move my hip around and I'm exploring. I'm not trying to go super deep into the stretch. I want to see where the beginning of the stretch is. Oh, I can actually right there. And really move forward. That's interesting. I'm just exploring. A lot of times people will say, where should I feel this stretch? Well, the place where you feel it is the place where you should feel the stretch because you might not feel it anywhere. It might, so you might need to creep your foot out a little bit further. But really listen to your body and try to sense where you're feeling that stretch. All right. That's a minute. All right. Next stretch. It's another 90 90 stretch. We're going to put our front leg at 90 degrees and our back leg at 90 degrees. Now, if you're like me, I've got, I've got a gap under my butt cheek. You can put a block under your butt, butt cheek. Or you can cheat it a bit. Uh, I'm going to fold this leg in just a little bit. And I'm going to fold this leg in a little bit so that I can be more upright. This whole thing kind of wants to tip me over. It wants, to, wants me to tip over uh, towards my forward leg. What I'm going to do is I'm going to reach under. I'm going to thread the needle. And I'm going to come up. I'm going to turn around the back, but I'm just going to explore. So I'm going to explore here around the back and I'm rolling a little bit with my leg, just kind of finding out where is my range, how much range do I have? And then I'm going to come around this way to the front before I thread the needle. And I'm just going to explore how much room do I have here? So, oh, see, I already 
just as I'm reaching, starting to crank it up, it's getting really close to 10 for me. So I'm going to back that off. And I'm going to stay up closer to a range of seven for myself. And I'm going to reach a little bit, come back, reach and come back. Let's go back to the first leg. Just exploring this way. How much room do you have? Just sense that hip moving back and forth. If you need to hold yourself up with your hand, you can do that. It's not illegal. We're just kind of looking for that place. Where are we feeling a stretch? You'll notice my knee comes off the floor here as I turn. So can I relax that? Can I let that down? That's something. I'm paying attention to what my body is feeling. And last time for that. And then reaching under. And reach under, just exploring. Reach under. Not going to 11. Keeping it. Up more, but exploring the range. All right. Okay, let's go back to our very first stretch. 90-90 kneeling. Let's take a little bit of time. Set up in your stretch. Get your toes forward far enough. You don't want your knees to go really past your ankle when you when you go into the stretch. So you move your foot forward so that your ankle and knee are in nice alignment. But now I'm just exploring. I'm finding out where that stretch is. What happens if I reach up with my arm? What happens if I reach over with my arm? I want to take a moment and investigate the stretch, interrogate it, find out what it can tell you about your body. Don't just blindly jump into the stretch, be really mindful. All right, that was a minute. Come back, I'm gonna turn so you can see me. I'm gonna set up the other side. Creep your toes forward. Set up in the stretch, take a good time to set up. Nice and tall. And investigate. Explore this stretch. What can it tell you? You're not going all the way. You're not going as far as is possible. You're being thoughtful and you're listening on the edge of the stretch. I'm on the edge of stretching. I'm on the edge of, I'm on the edge of glory. That's where I am actually. And I'm just putting my arm up again, and I'm seeing what this can tell me about different places where I've got tightness in my body. All right, that was a minute. And let's come down into our other 90-90. Can I do the opposite side of my left leg? No. My wife tells me I didn't do my opposite side, so we better do our opposite side. Wow. It appears... So this side is more difficult for me, and that's probably why I didn't do it. So if I sit in 90-90, it really tilts me over. I, I do not have a lot of mobility here. So I'm going to pull in my back leg just a little bit to give me a little more room. I'm also going to pull in my uh, front leg. So it changes the degree of rotation in my leg. So I'm going to sit here, I'm going to turn to the first side, and I'm just going to roll my hip back and forth. So if you see my hand moving here, I'm letting my hip go back and moving my hip forward. But I'm not going, I'm not being completely extreme. 
This is not like a nacho chip. This is not like extreme Mountain Dew. This is an exploration. And now I'm going to reach underneath. Yeah, I really do hate this side. I'm not going to lie. I'm reaching underneath and I'm exploring. How much room do I have? And I don't have a lot, eh? Like this, I, I'm, I'm super limited here. I'm going to creep my front foot forward just a little bit because I think I can, my, I think I can tolerate a little more um, stretch on the outside of my hip. My outward rotator. Let's come back to the initial side and move our hip back and forth. Exploring that feeling where, where is it limited and where does it move? And then back again to threading the needle and reaching and moving around in there and seeing what's available. All right, now <laughs> what I was supposed to do uh, for that particular uh, little movement sesh was I was supposed to do 90-90 uh, uh, kneeling, 90-90 seated uh, on left-right. On, uh, I'm going to try to say that again. I was supposed to do 90-90 kneeling left, 90-90 kneeling right and then 90-90 seated left, 90-90 seated right. Do that two times. But I didn't end up doing that. If you would like to go and do a second time through, just with your 90-90 seated, arrange your feet in this position and look at how you move through the position. You will move your hip back and forth and explore that. You will thread the needle on your opposite side and then you will do it on the other side, the side that I hate apparently. But I only I only hate it in an emotional way. I don't think I hate it in a visceral way and thread the needle as well. So <laughs> With that kind of slightly botched uh, workout, you still get the idea. The big idea is to not go as full and far into every stretch as possible. The idea is to take each stretch and explore it, investigate it, learn from it, and um, move into and out of the depth of the stretch without uh, just kind of hammering it on. There's lots of neurological advantages to doing this. Uh, um, that would take a lot longer to discuss, but the big idea is that you're not signaling to your muscle the whole time when it's in its end range, and that will uh, help you uh, explore your range more fully. Well, you've moved early, and I hope you remember to move often, and I hope you have a really awesome rest of your day. I'm Blake Martin, and thanks for coming to Memo.